We're here in Mercedes HQ in Brackley, where thanks to Bose, we're going to have an exclusive interview with team principal Toto Wolf, and also with model shop supervisor Richard Bruce will give us some exclusive insights into the world championship winning machinery they design here. Let's go. Mercedes have won every single world championship in the hybrid era. Of course, this season you've got a pretty unprecedented target of six consecutive world championship doubles. In many other types of organisation, complacency might set in. How do you go about avoiding that? It's energy levels, it's motivation, and it's about setting the right objectives. And I think that every single year we have been able to, um, to set the sails in the right direction, and there is no such thing as complacency that I have seen uh, within the Mercedes Formula One team. What, what more can you tell us about the work of the model shop? Yeah, so we produce a scale model of the car in the model shop. We'll manufacture that in a number of different ways. One way is it might be traditional machining or rapid prototyping or 3D printing as it's known uh, uh, nowadays. Uh, the 60% model wouldn't look uh, this, like this race car. You'd, you'd see a lot more modularity on the, on the various components as you move around the race car. It looks more like a patchwork quilt. Last year, obviously around the Belgian Grand Prix, there was a moment where it it looked like Ferrari had actually overtaken you and uh, how difficult was it to digest that weekend? These difficulties are the ones where we progress the most. Um, it says uh, success is a lousy teacher and um, it is important to reflect why failure happened and failure plus reflection equals progress. Speaking to Richard Bruce from the model shop, you've been keeping them incredibly busy. How, how much interaction do you have with, with, with these departments? It's very difficult to see everybody um, regularly, but I try to, to, to walk around. We are very open in our communication within the company. We, we share wind tunnel data. Uh, we talk about politics and we think it's overall very beneficial. Although Toto is the figurehead, I think the actual um, ethos and values of the team is, is, is spread across all of the people that work here. It's quite unique in terms of what we've got. No blame culture, um, you know, everyone pushing for the same goal, um, no one, whatever position, doesn't have, you know, doesn't have a voice, everyone's voice can be heard. Open door policy at every level, as a leadership level, we encourage people to come and give us ideas and come up with ideas and generate ideas. And so I definitely think that uh, Toto's influence just spreads throughout the team. But I think that comes from some of the values as well as we, that we've set ourselves. How important are the drivers to making that uh, kind of culture happen? When you look at the typical driver, you could almost say that they are not part of the team or employees, but they are contractors. But what we have achieved with our drivers is that they are a fundamental pillars for the, for the team's success. Funnily enough, there is, a, among my colleagues, team principals, there is some of us that, that have been in racing cars, but not none very successful. And I think I can relate to what the drivers say and what they feel, understanding how difficult it is to extract that performance. I think that is a competitive advantage. Your development race with the other teams goes on every day of the week. We call it the beat of the drum, so when the tunnels run in, uh, the backroom sort of uh, activity, which is the model shop and the manufacturing facility, what we're trying to do is keep with the pace and the beat of the drum of the, of, of the, of the tunnel environment to make sure when that fan's turning, we're feeding that beast with parts. How do you switch off after a particularly challenging uh, day on a race weekend? The, in Formula One, the real switching off doesn't happen. It's not possible. It's a 24-7 job. But obviously, you, we in the team are trying to, to deploy all kind of countermeasures, listening to music, uh, listening to some meditation apps, uh, is, is a real factor. And it's those, those marginal gains that will eventually add up and hopefully make us better than our competition. If at the end, everybody in here and in Brixworth has this one joint objective about winning races without a sense of entitlement and being in a position to fight for championship, I think you've made a good step already. Mm -hmm.